Hello, Namaskara. I am uh, Professor Hampi Oli uh, from uh, Professor of Mathematics, uh, KLS Gopti Institute of Technology, Belagami. I thank uh, authorities of VTU, E Section Committee, and our college authorities for having given me this uh, opportunity of delivering, uh, delivering lectures uh, to four semester mathematics students. Uh, I'll be delivering lectures uh, for uh, uh, last module that is the joint uh, probability distribution and uh, sampling theory and testing of hypothesis. I really wish a very, very safe time to all of you dear students. Keep safe yourself. Hope uh, uh, these lectures will be useful and fruitful to you. Thank you. Here we start. This is the subject code 18 mat 41 and uh, this is the title of uh, 18 mat 41 module 5 joint probability distribution sampling and testing of hypothesis these are my details and i'll be there are two sub parts in this module 5 first one is jpd and second one is sampling and testing of hypothesis in the beginning i'll be dealing with the uh, sampling So these are the main contents which I am going to cover in this. What do you mean by sampling? What is meant by testing of hypothesis and different examples and these different methods? And there are three parts in this. One is a big sample and one is a small sample and one is a testing of goodness of fit. These terminologies will be more and more clear to you when we proceed in this lecture series. Uh, before we proceed a small incidents uh, i remembered which will tell me tell all of us what is meant by this concept of sampling and uh, testing of hypothesis imagine a small boy first time a small boy of age say four years or five years uh, first time suppose he drinks the sea water he has gone to the seashore first time he takes a handful of water and drinks it Immediately to his mother, he exclaims, Oh mother, this uh, sea water is salty. Did you notice it? He took a handful of sea water in his hand and drank it. But his conclusion is for whole sea water. He has not drank the whole sea water. But his conclusion is for whole sea water. So, so nice. This uh, concluding about the whole thing. Taking only the sample is embedded in our human brain. Why we should not use it as a technology? Why we should not use it in our mathematics terminology? So this is nothing but small handful of uh, water is a sample of the whole population. We call it as whole sea water as population now. So there are two parts. Small part of the whole thing that is uh, here sea water is a population. And that is a small part of what you have taken is a sample. This happens day to day in day to day life also. But the sample may be small or little bigger also. I can take a bigger sample, a bucket of water or a barrel of water or a small a glass of water also. This happens, this sampling uh, happens in our day to day life also. If you go to shop, you take a handful of rice and uh, start smelling it and feeling it and try to conclude about the whole bag of rice. If you go to sweet mart, you don't eat all the pedas and conclude about the pedas naturally. You take small part of the epic of the peda and uh, you tell the shopkeeper that okay, it's nice and uh, uh, you can give me the peda. So that the whole lot of peda kept in the shop is a population and a small part to test that population, to, con to have an inference, to have the conclusion on the population that is whole peda uh, is sample similarly in day to day life in kitchen also it happens every day mothers do these sampling techniques whenever a mother cooks something every day usually she takes a small sample of it either she tests it or she gives to her children or somebody see you hang a gide nodi please tell me about this so uh, taking a small part of whatever suppose a a vegetable you have prepared to test uh, whether all the ingredients are correctly put or not 
they take the small spoon uh, full of that uh, small vegetable part and uh, they test so every day mothers do this sampling technique from the whole thing is known as population a small part is known as sample concluding about the whole population using the sample is all about this chapter and we use these mathematical terminologies in the next uh, slides to come quite interesting and students quite applied also in all industries in uh, hotel hotel uh, industries in all everywhere without this sampling technique we cannot proceed with the next steps so a large collection of individuals like uh, uh, all the students of a college can be a population some here and there randomly picked some 20 students or some 100 students may be small sample out of some 5000 students uh, strength of the college so all the 5000 students together those individuals together is a population terminology mathematical terminology is population or uh, very rarely we use this word universe also a finite subset of that which is a 20 students or 100 students randomly picked up is a sample now sample should be unbiased we cannot choose a purposely very good intelligent students and test we cannot choose purposely dull students and touch it should be unbiased randomly closing your ha closing your eye or taking a small sample like that so that we are assuming that whatever sample we take is a random sample impartial sample unbiased sample of course interestingly there is a technology for biased sample also that we are not dealing with so a large collection of individuals or numerical data is regarded as a population or universe interestingly in elections also exit poll is nothing but sampling technique only out of the whole uh, uh, this uh, whatever the electorals are there in that they will take a sample of some thousand people all the voters of 1.5 lakhs voters our population suppose in a district in one uh, constituency all the 1.5 lakhs voters are population in that in exit poll what they do they randomly take some uh, voters say some thousand voters and draw conclusion about it and you might have seen that almost 90 percent sometimes 50 percent sometimes 90 percent depends on the strength of the sample the they infer whatever they infer will be correct this itself shows that this sampling te technique is useful to the social life also. Here we go. A large collection of individuals or numerical data is regarded as population or inverse. A finite subset of this population is sample. If n is small less than 30, we say that it is small sample. 30 and onwards, technically we have agreed it is a large sample. For small sample, there are different tests and for large sample there are different tests small and test here means what we do the test using sample we test it and conclude in chemistry also you see there are different tests to see that whether it is which compound you put some uh, indicator in that whenever you put some uh, indicator you will get suppose say it is a potassium paramagnet depending on the color you conclude so here also depending on some criteria we start concluding about the sample the process of selecting a sample there is a big theory behind it that we are not dealing the process itself is a sampling selecting the process of selecting a sample is sampling the selection of an item from population the selection of some part of the population in such a way that each has the same chance of being selected is called as a random sampling in a classroom suppose of 100 if you totally want to select 10 students you should not select purposely some students you should close your eyes <coughs> sorry you should close your eyes and randomly select in whatever category dull intelligent mediocre average uh, very tall short whatever uh, you should select randomly that is known as so that if there are 63 students so 1 by 63 is the probability of getting selected each student that is known as they are having equal chance of being selected in the random sampling so now what is meant by sampling distribution suppose there is a very big population then uh, uh, suppose uh, there is a very big population 
and uh, I take many, many, many samples from it. This whole thing I considered it is a big population. Suppose this is a uh, all the people in a district. Then I select a sample of hundred, but I don't select only uh, only one sample. I select a first sample, second sample, third sample, fourth sample, fifth sample, like that. Some thirty to suppose some fifty samples I select. In each sample there are hundred students. That is known as sample size. How many samples we have selected? 50 samples. Suppose my parameter is to measure the heights of all those individuals. Suppose on and average, the average height is suppose 5 feet 1 inches, 5 feet 2 inches, again 5 feet 1 inches, again 5 feet 2 inches, 5 feet 3 inches, 5 9. So now I am having a representative of each sample, x1 bar, again x1 bar, x2 bar, again x2 bar, xn bar. X1 bar, X1 bar is repeating F1 times, X2 bar is repeating X2 times, X2 bar is repeating F2 times. So that in frequency distribution from school days, you might have done XF, X frequency distribution. Here, X1 bar F, X2 bar F, Xn bar F. This becomes a XF frequency distribution. So that this itself is known as sampling distribution. What you did from the whole population, you selected some samples. Again, you took some representative, say, average. Instead of average, you can take standard deviation or any, any representative data of what. And there may be many samples of the same average like x1 bar. Suppose x1 bar 10, x2 bar 10, x3 bar some 5, xn bar some 6, totally some 50 samples. So that the distribution, the statistical distribution of x1 bar, x2 bar, xn bar in the first column, f1, f2, f3, fn in the second column, this distribution itself is known as sampling distribution. And again, the mean of this, the median of this, the standard deviation of this can be talked. Now, some important sampling distributions are, we take whatever the, uh, whenever we take a me, uh, sample, we may be interested in getting the mean of it, standard deviation of it, so that sampling distribution of means, sampling distribution of difference of means, Sampling distribution of standard deviation, sampling distribution of proportions. The last one I may not deal. The first one is more important to you. So during the course of the journey of all these slides, we'll understand better and better. Now, most important part of this sampling theory is testing of hypothesis. So what I told that whenever you go to some big population like seawater, you want to first prove that seawater is salt. So that whatever is in your mind, so that you are going to test something. I want to test whether the sea water is salty or not, whether the river water is sweet or not. Whatever that comes to your mind is a hypothesis. That hypothesis will be testing. So hypothesis is an assumption that is it is a salty or it is a sweet. It is an assumption about the population which may be true or may not be true because only that small sample may be having like that. The remaining part may not be like that. Null hypothesis. In that, there are two types of hypothesis. Null hypothesis is it is formulated, that statement is written for possible rejection. That is, I make a hypothesis for the uh, seawater. Seawater is not salty. This statement becomes a null hypothesis. Its opposite negative uh, sentence, seawater is salty, becomes the its alternative hypothesis. Null hypothesis is H0 and uh, alternative hypothesis is H1. Suppose one more example I give, on and every, suppose I take a class of some 100 students about the population, the hypothesis is all, all, always made for a population that is tested using sample. Suppose I take the whole college students as on and average, the height of the college students is 5 feet 3 inches. It may be true, may not be true. That is, it may be true, may not be true. So to test that hypothesis, null hypothesis is what? The average height is not 5 feet 3 inches. Alternative hypothesis is, yes, whatever you thought is correct. Alternative hypothesis is, the average height of the whole college students is 5 feet 3 inches. So in all the examples, we are going to do the null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis. So you will be used to those terminologies. So, so far what we use the terminology is sample, population, sample size, the number of students in a 
sample or uh, the quantity whatever it is is a sample size sample size is we take it as a integer a natural number 55 63 23 these are all the sample sizes next you thought of uh, null hypothesis alternative hypothesis you should be able to write in examination one sentence for each of these if the uh, question is asked define what is meant by sampling distribution define what is meant by hypothesis define null hypothesis with an example define alternative hypothesis with an example so you should be able to give what is meant what is define sample define population with an example you should be able to tell so now there are uh, i'll come to this slide once again sometimes we may make mistake using sample that is uh, though the sample is telling something the population will be different so that in that uh, we should be how much confidently you tell about the sea water almost 99 percent confident that the first time the boy is telling it seems sea water is uh, salty how much confident and similarly about the population of the height of the students in a college on and average the height of the college is five feet three inches you may not be 99 percent sure so there is a uh, significant level confident level not only about the conclusion we are doing what is the confidence level of the whatever the statement we are doing see this is the statistics statistics is not as a mathematics a exact science this is absurd science whatever the conclusion we take will not be 100 percent correct so whatever the conclusion is take how much percent it is correct that also will tell significance level is the probability level below which it leads to the rejection of the hypothesis is known as significance level so 5% and 1% level means what? 5% significance level means we are 95% confident of our conclusion. 1% significance level means whatever we are concluding, we are 99% sure. So we never claim we are 100% sure. Because whenever you go to industry, you test some nails suppose. The length of the nails we manufacture for uh, 5 inches exactly. But exactly 5 inches nails will not be produced because of the machine error. They may be 5.001, 5.002, 4.98, 4.99. So, but whenever we test some hundreds of samples, we conclude that on and average it is 5 feet, uh, 5 inches. But how much confidence we are? 95% confident or 99% confidence. How to tell about the confidence also you will be learning. It is quite interesting. So, these two also you should be able to define. To minimize both the errors that is sometimes we whatever the conclusions we take uh, some errors will occur i will come back to the previous slide once again to minimize error mo more bigger the sample size smaller the error of the conclusion that you just imagine see whenever i think of a mango tree if i take only one mango if it is a, a not sweet you cannot conclude that all the mangoes are not sweet but if you take some hundred mangoes and ask them to test some some 50 people each one is eating some two mangoes and your conclusion may be better than eating one mango so that natural process it is it is a natural intuition that bigger the sample better is the conclusion okay so now testing of significance of mean suppose whenever a sample is there we can find the mean of this so whether the mean of the sample is same thing as the mean of the population or almost the same that is known as testing of single mean to test whether the difference of sample mean and population mean suppose the height of all the college students the average height of all the college students is a population mean which we denoted by mu and whatever 100 students we take the heights of those college the average height of that sample of students is x bar we want to test whether this x bar and mu are almost same whether this sample belongs to the population or not so that testing is known as testing of significance of single mean and we have got this uh, whatever the data is given whenever a data is given it is having some mean mu and standard deviation sigma but by this uh, uh, x bar minus uh, changing x to z variable by changing x bar minus mu by sigma by root n what happens is always the data can be converted to a standard normal distribution data which is having mean 0 and standard deviation 1. Given data, first we convert to SNV, standard normal variate, that you might have heard in 
normal distribution. So after converting that, we use this uh, mathematical tool z equal to x bar minus mu by sigma by root n. Of course, again, you will understand this better in the examples. Now, if at all we want to conclude, there will be z value, z tables. If at all we want to conclude that whatever the conclusion is correct for 95% conclusion, that time we are going to conclude that if the z value is between minus 1.96 to plus 1.96, we are 95% sure that our conclusion is correct. If the z value is between minus 2.58 to plus 2.58, you are going to get a real number here, of course. Any real number. Suppose the value is something like 1.2. That belongs to this interval, 95% confident. The value is between, suppose, uh, uh, 2.45. It is 99% confident, but not 95% confident. This is known as there are two types of tests, two tailed and one tailed. We are sticking to two tailed tests. First of all, we shall finish the examples and we will have better idea of, better grip of what we are talking about sampling and uh, confidence limits. So similarly, whenever there are, suppose I take two tests, two samples, whether both the samples belong to the same population or not. Suppose I take the 100 mangoes in one box, 100 mangoes in one more box, whether both the mangoes belong to the same tree or not. I take 100 stones from one sample, one more 100 stones from one more sample. And I don't know from which college they are. So by testing whether you can conclude that both belong to the same college or not or whether there is no much significant difference between the both the samples. So that testing of significance of difference of mean this becomes the z, uh, z value x1 bar minus x2 bar that is x1 bar is the mean of first sample of size n1 x2 bar is mean of second sample of uh, size n2 and mu1 and mu2 sometimes we take samples from two different mean two different populations that time first population second population mean and first population standard deviation second population standard deviations we don't worry much about this only thing is we have to concentrate on some model here mathematical tool we are going to have this uh, we are going to come back to these mathematical models whenever there are two samples similarly testing of standard deviations we are going to use this model. Now, suppose we want to test and we want to be, we want to test, suppose there are some thousands of nails. I take uh, 100 nails as a sample. Suppose uh, mu is the population mean. All the thousand nails, if I take the measure, the uh, length and uh, find the average that is mu and the whatever the sample I have taken that average is x bar and uh, correspondingly sigma is the standard deviation of the population yeah. n is the sample size and if at all if at all I find this if at all in this interval the value of sam uh, average value of the sample falls then I am 95% confident if the value of the uh, length falls between these two, then I am 99% confident. Last example, I will be coming to this. What do you mean by I am talking 95% confident? What is meant by 99% confident? Confidence limits means whenever we make a statement, how much confidently we are talking. Suppose somebody makes a statement, today it is going to rain. But how much confident you are? Are you confident 100%? No, 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 50%. No, 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 95%. So that is the confidence limits we are talking. Now, this type 1 and type 2 errors occur whenever we do the conclusion. See here, first suppose hypothesis is already true. If the hypothesis is whatever the is true and I have to accept it, if I accept the hypothesis, then it is a correct decision. Instead of accepting unnecessarily for some technical reason, I, deal, I reject it. For true hypothesis, I reject it. Then there occurs an error. First error is, Hypothesis is true, then also I am going to reject it. If the hypothesis is wrong, I would have rejected it. The hypothesis is false, okay, then I have to reject. It is the correct decision. But if the hypothesis is false, but I accept it, it is a wrong decision. This is type 2 error. So you may be asked a question, what is meant by type 1, type 2 error? You have to write only this part. Once again, I remind that to minimize this type of errors, we need to increase the sample size. 
okay so it has really a very good uh, industry applications this uh, uh, there is a z normal distribution this you might have come across uh, in your probability distribution uh, uh, theory part normal distribution theory part this z value area under the z curve if you can see 1.95 there is no 1.96 half of the area covered is 0.47 that is if you double it 0.94 or if you round off it it is 0.95 means 95 percent confident whenever there is 1.95 and z value is less than 1.95 mod of z value is less than 1.95 double of this is 0.47 double is 94 or if you add all these digits it becomes 95 percentage if i search 2.58 here 2.55 between 2.55 to 2.60 so 0.49 if you double it it becomes 90.98 and if you round off it it becomes 99 percentage if the value of z is mod of z is less than 2.58 in between 2.55 to 2.60 then we are 99 percent confident that uh, our conclusions are correct about 99 percent first example when the example starts uh, uh, this uh, focus on what is asked and what parameters are given so whenever you go on doing more and more number of examples definitely concepts will be more and more clear first example the mean weight of obtained from a random sample of size 100 so sample size n is 100 is 64 grams so here what is the variable variable is weight some products are there in that exact 64 grams suppose we are not going to have suppose i am focusing to get 67 grams some suppose some masala packet is there that masala packet should contain 67 grams according to the company on that outside the masala packet there will be the total ingredients the weight is 67 grams similarly on the uh, tablets also the total weight they write 5 mg exactly 5 mg may not be there 4.99996 mg may be there very 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 small difference will occur always because of human error because of the technology is advancing now that error is becoming very very small of course but then also 100 percent correct is almost impossible the mean weight of obtained from a random sample of size 100 is 64 sample size 100 sample mean 64 the standard deviation of the weight that weight of the population is 3 grams standard deviation of the population please so there are lakhs of products produced that mean may be different that may not may not may not be 64 grams but the standard deviation is 3 grams see this is the next sentence is important to frame the hypothesis test the statement that means whatever the statement next is that is hypothesis mean weight of the population is 67 grams so your hypothesis will be mean weight of the sample is either not 67 grams or mean weight of the hypothesis is mean weight of the sample is mean weight of the population is 67 grams hypothesis is always set for the population because on which you want to conclude population you want to conclude depending on the sample taken sample size of 100 also at 5 percent level of significance so we want to test of 90 we want to whatever we conclude we want to test for 95 percent confidence limit 95 percent confidence limit is same thing as 5 percent level of significance interchangeably both the terminologies are being used either you tell 5 percent level of significance or you tell 95 percent confidence also set up 99 percent confident limits of the mean weight of the population once again i am telling here some products are there suppose some masala packets lakhs of masala packets are manufactured by a company they intend to manufacture 67 grams that is the population mean but sometimes 65 66.3 64 grams some variation of the grams may be there but on and average if this variation is okay if the variation this variation can you conclude that on and average 67 grams whatever they have claimed is correct there will be a job inspectors they will they will go to company and test the sample they test according to isi uh, markings all these are very very important to the iso isi for certifications also now if i start the solution as a solution you think simple n equal to 100 sample size sample mean 64 population standard deviation 3 then 
first of all frame the null hypothesis there is no significant difference between sample mean and population or belongs to the this sample belongs to the population with mean weight 67 alternate it's what it's opposite whatever you think it's opposite is alternate hypothesis is this uh, uh, h1 means mu is not sample mean is not 67 so now first first step is write the data en equal to 100 x bar equal to 64 sigma equal to 3 second step is null hypothesis statement third step is this z is very important z is x bar minus mu by sigma by root n x bar is 64 sample mean minus 67 population mean 3 is standard deviation square root of 100 this 100 is sample size some real number you are going to get this minus 10 if it belongs to the range of minus 1.6 to plus 1.96 you are accepting otherwise you are rejecting the statement so here it is not belonging to the minus 1.96 to plus 1.96 so the uh, we are going to reject the hypothesis reject the hypothesis means this is true that is true means sample mean is concluding that this sample does not belong to the population or population uh, this uh, weight 67 on average the weight of the sample is weight of the mean weight is 67 is a wrong statement whatever they are claiming is wrong so last sentence is uh, we have to conclude we have to conclude that this uh, mod z please neglect this part because this is being repeated just to again tell you that uh, just i have copied it because uh, unnecessary i have to go to the back slide this minus 10 does not belong to minus 1.96 to plus 1.96 hence if it belongs we are accepting hypothesis if it does not belong you are rejecting hypothesis if you are accepting hypothesis suppose if you are rejecting hypothesis you conclude the opposite of whatever you assumed the sample is not drawn from the population with mean 67 if you are accepting the hypothesis the sample belongs to the population of mean 67 or its meaning is population means it is not 67 whatever the company is claiming 67 grams it is not correct next example so suppose i want to talk what should be the mean weight of that product in the range in which range it fall it should fall so that 99 percent i'm sure 99 percent i should be sure that yes this belongs to the same company this product belongs to the same company which is claiming 67 grams so here for 99 percent confidence this becomes 2.58 for 95 percent confidence this number becomes 1.96 that much you should remember here and here so when i substitute this uh, 64 here and uh, we are going to get sigma 3 n 100 64 sigma 3 n 100 i am going to get two real numbers so that this uh, belongs to 63.226 64.774 means if the product is having the weight in terms of 63.226 grams to 64.774 grams then definitely i can tell that the mean weight belongs to this belongs to the with 99 percent confidence you are telling that it is belonging to the same category so subject to the condition that our arithmetics are correct always keep checking the arithmetics I'll go to the next example. Example number may not be in series, but uh, example is important. The voltage of a voltage source means a battery is measured 50 times. This becomes sample size. Okay. At different times, you are measuring that voltage source voltage. First time 110, second time 110.1 third point 110.3 volts so different data is collected that whole data of 50 data is there so first time second time 50 time the data is there all the 50 times voltage is measured the voltage of a voltage source is measured 50 times n equal to 50 and the mean voltage is formed to be found to be it is should be found to be 110.12 volts with a standard deviation of 0.6 volt that is uh, x bar is 110.12 standard deviation is 0.69 test the hypothesis that the mean voltage of the source should be 110 volt the company claims whatever the lakhs of batteries they are manufacturing they are aiming at 110 volts 
with the at 0 0.05 level of significance means with 95% confidence. Here also n is 50, sample mean is 110.12 volts and uh, sigma that is population standard deviation is 0.69 but they are claiming that the on and average the company claims 110 volts. This difference, if this difference is okay to conclude your 95% confidence, just on and average we should not tell. We should use a mathematical terminology like this. Hypothesis, you can claim that yes, whatever the company is claiming is true. You can write a sentence, yes, the mean voltage of the source is 110 volts. This you can write in sentences, in words, mean voltage of the source is 110 volts. This becomes our null hypothesis. So, opposite is alternate hypothesis. Second step is Z equal to X bar minus mu bar sigma by root n. It's always there. So, that X bar is sample mean. Mu is population mean. 0.6 is given, which is standard deviation. 50 is sample size. You are going to get a real number. Whether this belongs to 95% confidence limits? Yes, it belongs to. So, what we test it. This is the meaning of testing. Whether it belongs or not belongs to the testing. So, very simple actually. Actually, you never forget to attempt this type of questions. So, whatever we are claiming, we accept. If it is not belonging, we are rejecting. If we accept, whatever you claim is true, which is mean voltage of the sources, you can conclude that whatever the company is claiming is correct, then the job inspector will certify that whatever they are claiming is correct. So, once again, I am telling if this would have been jet calculated, would have been something like 2.5 or 1.99 or 2.1 this does that time it would have not belong to this uh, limits then would have concluded h naught is rejected mean voltage of the source is not 110 volts okay so here we go to the next example every time we are finding the sample size population mean sample mean and sample size based on this we are finding z belongs to that interval or not the random sample drawn from two countries now give the following data relating to the height of adult males okay height of somebody height itself is a variable now is the difference between the means is dif dif significant is the difference between the standard deviation is significant let us see what is the data country a average 67.42 country b average is 67.25 mean height their standard deviation is 2.58 <laughs> Their standard deviation is 2.5. Here sample size of 1000 is found. Here sample size of 1200 is found. You can see that we are testing for large sample. We are taking the sample for almost more than 30. So now this becomes x1 bar, x2 bar, n1, n, n1, n2, sigma1, sigma2. Or s1, s2 also sometimes we tell for a large sample we take that. So, once again, I am repeating this question for you. Is the difference between the means significant? Are, are the heights of both the countries almost the same? You can conclude. Okay, I don't want to tell on and average because variation is also important. So, for that reason, this is the testing of uh, whatever we are telling. So, N1, first you conclude N1 is 1000, X1 bar 67.42, X S1 is 2.58, that is the standard deviation. N2 is 1200, X2 bar 2.5, you note down this. Our alternative hypothesis is, let us, let us see that both the countries almost have the same height. Okay. Second hypothesis is both the countries have got same variation in the heights. So now, first sample is instead of S1 minus S2, you should write x1 bar minus x2 bar there is a correction here please so what you should write x1 bar minus x2 bar please correct this x1 bar minus x2 bar so what we have substituted here so like first of all it is corrected uh, calculated for a second example which is uh, 2.58 minus 2.50 divided by whatever we get is uh, this is the second part of the theory so this uh, whatever we get the uh, in this uh, second it is put for the second example we tested second example so this becomes this values s1 minus s2 divided by sigma 1 square sigma 2 square for large sample s1 is same thing as sigma 1 s2 is same thing as sigma 2 for small sample less than 30 s1 and sigma 1 vary 
That's why we have written here large sample. This will become some real number n1, n2 respectively 1000 and 1200 when you substitute you are going to get this as 1.0387 and that is this mod value is below less than 1.96 is equivalent to this belongs to the interval minus 1.96 to plus 1.96. So we conclude for the second example that difference between the standard deviation is not significant. Okay. So what is conclusion? H0 is accepted. H0 here is both are same. Difference between the standard deviation is not standard deviation of both the countries of the height as far as heights are concerned. There is no much variation in the heights that is concluded. So similarly one can do for uh, instead of putting just a small homework to you instead of putting S1 minus S2 just change it to 67.42 minus 67.25 remaining all same denominator same and if that belongs to minus 1.96 to plus 1.96 your hypothesis is true that is both have both the countries have almost the same average height otherwise if it does not belong to minus 1.96 to plus 1.96 both the countries have got different height here the answer is hypothesis becomes true please do it please example 5 Example number 5, <coughs> sorry, I will take last example today. In a survey of buying habits of 400, here also there are two samples. In a survey of buying habits of 400 women, shoppers, women shoppers are chosen at random in a supermarket A. In a supermarket, some supermarket, randomly some 400 women are selected and their buying habits are tested. The average weekly food expenditure is rupees 2.50, rupees 250 with standard deviation of 40. Standard deviation of 40 means 250 plus 40 uh, maximum is 290 and 250 minus 40 minimum is 210 in this variation. Uh, this standard deviation tells you variation plus or minus 40 like that. So what is the conclusion here? 400 women in the first supermarket that is sample size 400 for the first their average buying habits buying habits is concluded using their expenditure so 250 rupees almost they are spending on and average whenever they go to the supermarket a with the plus or minus 40 similarly for second supermarket b sample size may not be same 500 women shop shoppers are selected randomly and their buying habits is 220 rupees average they are spending with standard division of 45 means 220 plus or minus 45 on and average they are spending at 99% confidence, at 99% confidence, check whether both the groups have got same expenditure habits. So what all you have to do? Sample size N1 400, N2 500. So on and average X1 bar, X2 bar, average is 250, 220. So sample means S1 40, S2 45. Sample mean is same thing as population mean here that is sigma 1, sigma 2 for large sample sample size more than 30. Our hypothesis is both samples have got same buying habits. Both the supermarket 400 women and 500 women have got almost the same buying habits. Means their expenditure, spending expenditure, whatever expenditure they are doing on an average it is same. So now this is the testing model which we call it as test statistic that is Z is used for bigger sample x1 bar minus x2 bar s1 square by s2 square n1 plus n2 so now in the previous example also uh, in the previous example also whenever you are doing the first first part this 2 will not be there which i told so without 2 you conclude the whenever you are doing x1 bar minus x2 bar so without 2 means only n1 plus n2 you have to do and find which i have shown here as a next example so when I do this, substitute all these values, 10.574 I am getting. The confidence limit is minus 2.5 to plus 2.58. So we are 99% sure that both the buying habits are different because this does not belong to this int interval. We have to reject the, this is the testing of hypothesis. If it belongs, it is accepted hypothesis, does not belong, reject. Reject means whatever you are concluding, expenditures are not equal. Here in the beginning in H0 you can write expenditures of the both the buying habits of both the supermarkets are same on, on and or on and average they 
their expenditure is same. We can write one sentence and conclusion is expenditures are not equal. Dear students, some idea we got how to take sample size, how to conclude Z equal to, how to write Z equal to for one mean, two mean, the concentrate on one mean more and uh, how to conclude whether the uh, reject or accepting the data, how to at last conclude about the population. So again revise what is meant by sample, what is meant by population, depending on the sample we are going to conclude. Today we will stop here. In the next lecture, I'll be taking some more examples and afterwards moving to the small sample. Wish you a good day, good time. See you. Bye.